Welcome to Love from the Hip. I'm spiritual hypnotherapist, master esthetician, and your host, Sakura Sutter. This show was created with the intention of helping others to help and love themselves. Aside from weekly skin tips, you will hear me feature amazing souls from around the world who are making a difference by helping others in their own unique way. You may also hear me follow up with a guest I've hypnotized on an online edition of Love from the Hip, which is available on YouTube. Together, we can all make a difference, and it starts with love. Love from the Hip. In 1948, Ulrich Leonard Tolle, or Eckhart Tolle, spiritual teacher and author, was born in a small northern German town that was scarred by World War II. To escape his unhappy upbringing, Eckhart resorted to books. His intense quest for knowledge only deepened his depression as he pursued more education through his studies of philosophy, psychology, and literature at the University of London. After he went on to pursue a scholarship at Cambridge University, but due to his suicidal thoughts and his unstable mind, he dropped out. At the age of 29, suffering from severe depression, Eckhart asked himself a question that would change his life for the better. Who is this self that I cannot live with? This marked the beginning of his intense inward journey. Eckhart soon came to realize that the self is something we construct in our minds, along with all the problems we cannot fix that go along with it. It was in that moment in which Eckhart let go, found inner peace of being in the world and not in his mind, and simply was present. This presence allowed Eckhart to finally experience the greatest fulfillment and joy when for too long he experienced quite the opposite of the deepest anxiety and emptiness. Through his own solitary journey, Eckhart had made preparations to share this gift of the purposeful presence with the world. He was able to turn his own personal struggle into a widely attainable philosophy that would help millions. In 1997, he published his first book called The Power of Now, which not only made it to the bestsellers list, but also received Oprah's recommendation. Although he was up against critics, he did not stop trying to reach more people. And at the age of 71, he is still sharing his spiritual teachings and helping more people today. Eckhart's mental illness helped him to achieve an awakened state of being. He continues to emphasize how great of an opportunity it is to have illness. And according to Eckhart, although illness is a mind form which causes suffering and fear, in order to be free, we need to be aware of our state of consciousness throughout our illness. So not only does an illness allow us to be fully present, but also if we are living in the present moment, we get out of our minds and instead exist in the world. The pain from the illness keeps us present. And according to psychological research, pain is an opportunity to heal or improve. But if one ignores it, then it intensifies and becomes suffering. Suffering is repeated failure to actually change. Suffering is a function of imbalances in the mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual functioning. For those who suffer from chronic pain, there is a direct correlation between negative thinking and the level of pain they experience. It becomes a vicious cycle. But this suffering can be altered if one becomes consciously aware and learns how to respond to their pain differently. So essentially, by having conscious awareness of the negative self-talk and minimizing the suffering, one then decreases the anger, anxiety, fear, sadness, depression, helplessness, and loneliness, which leads to less stress and less pain. So the pain then is unavoidable, but the suffering becomes a choice. This is why anything used to numb the pain, like alcohol, drugs, and medication, causes and prolongs the suffering. In order to prevent suffering, the motivation of the pain should be pursued through mindfulness, breaking old habits or ways of thinking, and by asking questions. In addition, by taking responsibility for the pain and the emotions associated with it, we can then light up the self-healing and self-correcting components of pain. One breaks the victimhood of pain in that way. The conversation becomes less of, why is this happening to me, and more of, why is this happening for me? Of course, the suffering, albeit optional, can serve a greater purpose. We can seek the opportunity to transform and be free of it. And unfortunately for many a great spiritual teachers like Eckhart, it has taken great illnesses and suffering to do so, but it served a purpose, and the for me became realized in the end. As Eckhart said, suffering is necessary until you realize it is unnecessary. Today I have the pleasure of interviewing Rory Reich. He is a transformational coach and author of Transform Yourself Through Disease, Eight Steps to Reclaim Your Health and Your Life. He will share his journey and his book's eight steps. Plus, later on the show, we will open up the phone line so you can ask Rory for free coaching if you are feeling stuck in any area of your life. So stick around after this quick break. 
Microneedling is a revolutionary treatment that can help reduce the appearance of acne scars, fine lines, pigmentation, wrinkles, even improve the appearance of stretch marks by stimulating collagen and elastin. Sakura Skin and Mind specializes in this procedure that jumpstarts your body's natural healing process. Sakura Skin and Mind believes in not only keeping the skin up to date with the latest trends in the skincare industry, but also keeping the skin beautiful, fast, pretty, painless, and affordable. Find out more at sakuraskinandmind.com. S-A-K-U-R-A skinandmind.com. Easy on the ears, good for the soul. Alternative Talk 1150. Welcome back to Love from the Hip. I'm spiritual hypnotherapist, master esthetician, and your host, Sakura Sutter. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Facebook and to su- subscribe and share my YouTube channel and podcast on Podcast One, Love from the Hip, and that's H-Y-P. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Rory Reich. He is a transformational coach and author of Transform Yourself Through Disease, Eight Steps to Reclaim Your Health and Your Life. Thank you for being here today, Rory. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So I want to ask, how long do you think you have been dealing with pain and suffering with chronic illness? Well, that's a simple answer. Uh, It's also fairly difficult for me to say because it's been 20 years. It started when I was in my early 20s, around the age of 25. Okay. What were you noticing? Well, that's the interesting thing, (laughs) is at the time I was living an incredibly healthy life. I was following all the conventional wisdom on health and wellness. I was a strict vegan. I was doing yoga two to three hours a day, four to five days a week. I was going to the gym, working out. I didn't watch TV. I didn't eat sugar. Uh, I spent all my free time reading books and going on walks and just being outside, Mm. and I really was kind of at the pinnacle of health. When I looked around, especially at the age of 25, no one was as healthy as I was. Yeah, that's a lot. It was was a lot, and then one day I woke up and something had changed. Okay, and And go on, I'm sorry. Yeah, and so there was no, you know, the interesting part about it was there there was no decline. There was Mm -hmm. no noticeable decline. It was really like a switch went off. And so every time you would go into the doctor's office, were you getting any diagnosis? Well, so what happened was um, one day I woke up and I was just exhausted. And I had never really experienced that level of exhaustion before. And I had just assumed that I was putting in too many hours at work. And I was just pushing myself too hard. So I took a week off and just stopped all physical activity. And then went back after a week and did a yoga class, which was was a really intense class. Uh, And I felt fine. But the next morning I woke up and I was exhausted again. And so what I did was I took a month off. And I figured, okay, I just really need to get some rest. Same thing. After a month, went back to class, felt fine, but the next morning woke up and I was exhausted. And this is when I finally realized I needed to go seek medical attention. Mm. And had you been seeking medical attention prior to that point? I hadn't. I mean, to be honest, I was so healthy. Uh, I never went to the doctor. Okay. And so at that time, this was 20 years ago, Right. uh, I only had and knew of one doctor, which is Western medicine. And Mm -hmm. so I went to my doctor, and I had him run a bunch of tests, and he came back and said, I can't find anything. You're in perfect health. Mm -hmm. And the only solution he offered me at that time was prescription drugs for depression. Huh. So that's what he thought it was. He really wasn't sure. I mean, you know, 20 years ago, mystery illness and chronic illness aren't what they are today. I mean, for a very long time, I had never came across another person that was going through what I was going through. And so I just don't think doctors were prepared at that time to even know what was happening to people. Right. And so it's obviously a different landscape today than Mm -hmm. it was back then. Was there anything going on in your life as well (laughs) during that time? You know, this is what was so frustrating is I would have to say no. Like, I really felt like I had built the ideal life. Mm -hmm. I was really happy. I was spending my time doing exactly what I wanted to do. I felt great every day. And so over the last 20 years, I've asked myself that question. Like, why did this happen to me? Right. Why did this happen to me? And it was only up until a few years that I finally found out. Which we're going to get to. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so you were not masking the symptoms at all. You were just pushing through it. Um, do you mean when? When you were having the pain or the, the Yeah. So, so what happened was it, it, it just changed my life. I woke up that day and I just, I could still live a, a fairly functional life. Mm -hmm. but I couldn't do any physical activity. Every time I tried to do something physical, go to the gym, work out in the yard for a few hours, I would just be exhausted to my core. And what happened is I'd end up getting sick. And so I'd push myself, I'd get sick. It would take me sometimes a month to get back to a place where I felt okay. 
And so I had to be really careful about how I managed my life. And that was really the place that I lived in for about 20 years was just managing every aspect of my life to just exist. Yeah, it was like a balancing act for you. It was a balancing act. So then what happened? What was your last diagnosis then with the Western medicine doctor? So about three years ago, um, really every area of my life was falling apart. It was a very difficult time. Uh, I was in a marriage and we finally made the decision to get a divorce Mm -hmm. uh, and break up our family. My chronic illness was still present. It had not gone away. I was at a job where I just felt really unappreciated and misunderstood. Um, And I'm a really spiritual person, but I had lost my connection to spirit altogether. I was just so frustrated and so complacent that I just didn't know what else to do. Um, And then I went to the doctor to look at my yearly blood work. So it was just something that I did. I just would go every year. They'd run a bunch of tests. I wasn't actually ever expecting for them to find anything. And I walked into her office, and she looked at me, and she said, you know, are you feeling okay? And I said, yeah, I'm just... I'm undergoing a lot of stress right now in my personal life. And she said, sit down. And she started going over my labs. And she came to the conclusion at that point that I had leukemia. Mm -hmm. And so she told me, "Um, you're going to be okay. Like, don't worry about it. I think you're the type of person that can get through this, that can beat this. But to be honest, I was just in shock. Yeah. I really wasn't it mentally, emotionally available to hear anything that she was saying. Was there a part of you that was also relieved to finally get a diagnosis? Um, no. No? <laughs> I mean, I think it's twofold. I've been searching for answers for 20 years. Right. What I thought was that I had neglected my health. I had neglected my chronic illness. And now I had allowed it to get wildly out of control. Mm. So I didn't feel like this was an answer. I actually felt like this was just things getting worse and worse. And so it actually, it just made me feel bad about my situation. Mm. It didn't make me feel hopeful. Like you hadn't worked hard enough. Yes, like I dropped the ball. Huh. So how did that diagnosis impact your relationship with your family and your friends? <laughs> that's funny. Um, so I'm a person that's pretty private. And to be honest, I didn't share it with a lot of people. Um, I just kind of went inward. I absorb the pain. Um, I had to share it with my daughter. My daughter, I have an eight-year-old daughter, and so I have 50% custody of her. And so there were a lot of days where I had never been that sick before in my life. I'd Mm -hmm. never been that scared before in my life. And it really affected our relationship in the sense that I just couldn't show up as the father that I wanted to be. And that was really, really challenging for me. And do you feel also that your symptoms were almost emphasized after having a diagnosis, like they came out more? Oh, definitely. Um, I would say that I had learned whether this was the only contributing factor, but how fear, yeah, fear can bring you to your knees. Because I, the day I was diagnosed, I felt okay. Mm-hmm. But within three months, I literally couldn't walk up a flight of stairs. I was so exhausted, and I started to get really, really scared. And had you also been researching leukemia online? I had, and so that was the first thing I did was get on the internet and start to try to figure out what was going on. And fill your head with more fear. Yes. <laughs> well, I hate to interrupt you, but we're going to have to take a quick break. But remember, this is a live show, and if you are feeling stuck in your life and would like free coaching from Rory on how to get unstuck, then feel free to call one 298 kknw or 425-373-5527 after this quick break. Post-traumatic stress syndrome affects people from all walks of life. Triggered by sexual assault, traffic, collisions, warfare, or other threats to life. PTSD is a killer. Every day, an average of 22 veterans commit suicide due in part to PTSD. Retired U.S. Colonel Debbie Simpson struggled with her own PTSD, following a military career specializing in critical care. Debbie turned to dancing as a way to heal unresolved grief, guilt, and shame caused by the losses of war. The benefits were so great that she founded the nonprofit Battlefield to Ballroom, a unique approach to assisting other brave warriors. Battlefield to Ballroom has partnered with famed dance company Arthur Murray International to help veterans in need. If you or someone you know can benefit, log on now to battlefieldtoballroom.org. That's Battlefield. The number two, ballroom.org. Life is a dance, and you can give the gift of the first steps towards recovery. Donate 
at battlefieldtoballroom.org today. Hypnotherapy helps you discover and explore deep, sustainable life changes. Let Sakura guide your communication with your unconscious mind. Rid yourself of negative behaviors, fears, pains, and emotions. Weight loss, smoking, childhood drama, chronic pain, and much more can be addressed. Begin healing now. Just $100 for the first session. Learn more at sakuraskinandmind.com. S-A-K-U-R-A skinandmind.com. Bring out the healthy way of thinking you didn't know you had. At Madsen Medical Spa, our goal is a healthy, beautiful you. We're a full-service medical spa, but our focus is educating people on maintaining health and wellness. We're excited to announce a new addition to our menu, Nootropic Popular Beverage. This magical drink formulation alleviates unnecessary snacking while keeping you focused and alert throughout your day. It satisfies your hunger, renews your energy, enhances your mood, diminishes aches and pains. Essentially, it makes you happy. And who doesn't want to be happy? Patients have already been raving about Nootropic Popular Beverage. They've elevated their mood while losing inches in the process. It's safe, natural, fast, and effective. Drink happy, feel happy. Nootropic Popular Beverage, happiness in a cup. Available at happytoelevate.com. That's H-A-P-P-Y-T-O-E-L-E-V-A-T-E.com. Or call 206-234-9188. Warning, you may feel happy. Men, care for your skin properly, starting with your face. Sakura Skin and Mind offers their Gentleman's Groom Clinical Facial for just $120. Designed for your rugged skin, a deep cleansing clinical facial is like a one, two, three punch to wrinkles, age spots, and problem skin. Tame those brows, ears, and nostrils. Sakura Skin and Mind, erasing wrinkles one clinical facial at a time. Learn more at sakuraskinandmind.com. S-A-K-U-R-A SkinAndMind.com Find our app in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store and take us with you wherever you go. Alternative Talk, AM 1150. Welcome back to Love from the Hip. I'm spiritual hypnotherapist, master esthetician, and your host, Sakura Sutter. Don't forget to tune right here on KKNW every Wednesday at 2 to 3 p.m. for more Love from the Hip. Today I have the pleasure of interviewing Rory Reich. He is a transformational coach and author of Transform Yourself Through Disease, Eight Steps to Reclaim Your Health and Your Life. And if you are feeling stuck in your life and would like free coaching from Rory on how to get unstuck, then feel free to call 1-888-298-KKNW or 425-373-5527. So Rory, before the break, you were talking about how you had been looking for answers for 20 years and you finally went back to the doctor and you got an answer, and that was leukemia. So what did you decide to do with that information at that point? After getting out of shock, that is. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, at that time, I still believed that I had leukemia. I believed in the diagnosis. But I knew that when I walked out of her office and I never went back, I knew whatever pathway I took that Western medicine wasn't going to be part of it. And I think what I came to realize over the 20-year period was that Western medicine was causing me more harm than offering me solutions. And I came to believe that our bodies, our minds, and this planet offer everything we need for true healing. And so I was literally willing to die to uphold my beliefs. Hmm. And so I got on the Internet and started searching for answers. But um, really the interesting thing is that I organically ended up finding people and building a team and it was more based on my desire to connect with spirit and to something greater than just about healing my physical body. Hmm. So how, who did you recruit? <laughs> <laughs> so interestingly enough, I went to a sound bath, which I had never done before. A friend of mine had told me about it, and he said, you got to check this out. Like, this, is, this is amazing. And so I went to a local woman named Irene Ingalls, uh, who's one of the most talented healers I've ever met in my life. And I experienced uh, one of her group sound baths. And during that time, I had an incredibly profound energetic experience. And this wasn't the first time I'd experienced something like that, but it had been a really long time. Mm -hmm. You know, that part of me was pretty shut down. And so afterwards, I booked a private with her. Um, and then I asked her, I said, who do you go to? Like, who do you go to in the city when you have a problem? 
mm-hmm. when you need healing. And she gave me three names. And so I made appointments with all three of those people. And I did the same thing. I made uh, appointments with all the people that they really admired. And um, over about a four or five month period, I had created uh, my tribe. Your team. Yeah. So what what kinds of modalities were involved in your team other than the sound healing? Yeah. And so, you know, this is one of the interesting things is that I started out on a process to heal my physical body. But somewhere along the lines, I realized that I had created a holistic approach to treating my entire life. Mm. And so some of the modalities I was using were energy healing. Um, I was doing breath work and coaching for my emotional life. Uh, I was doing coaching and reading books about my mind, how to use my mind to change the way that I looked at my circumstances, how to remove limiting beliefs, um, and just really how to approach the situation in a very different way. Hmm. And at the same time, I was also, I have a spiritual coach. And so my spiritual coach was helping me to understand my purpose for being here. Hmm. Why was this happening? Right. And again, I think what you talked about earlier is that I had to shift from this idea of, this is happening to me too. This is happening for me. Right. I had to remove that victim mentality and I had to step into my power and say that this entire experience has been a learning lesson and what mm-hmm. am I going to do with it? Mm-hmm. And then you're almost extracting the disease, right? The illness from your body, from your physical form by saying this is happening. Why is this happening for me instead of to me? You're not attaching yourself to it. Exactly. You're not yeah. identifying with the problem. Mm-hmm. You're looking at the situation and saying, what can I learn from this situation? Yeah. And you're deciding to believe that no matter what happens, you're going to be okay. Right, right. Or in the 20 years before that, when you don't have answers, when you're confused, when you're frustrated, when you're checked out on life, you do not think you're going to be okay. So I have to ask, so you said you had been on the spiritual path yes. when you were in that 20 years looking for answers. Now, after doing everything that you were doing, which you were doing a lot, yes. do you feel like you were really on the spiritual path? Oh, you know, I would, I would jump on and off. Okay. As, as with my health care, I would try something. I would go in and find somebody and they'd have an idea. And I'd go all in for three months, six months, sometimes a year of doing supplements, radically changing my diet, changing everything about myself, and I wasn't feeling any better. And so so then I would go into a place of depression Hmm. when I would go into a place of being checked out. And maybe that would last for three months, six months. Maybe it would last for a year. And then I would try again. And so it's just been this up and down process of really wanting the change. But every time you hit a wall, it really kind of takes the wind out of your sail. And maybe part of the problem, too, is you wanted instant gratification, instant results? Yeah, I, that's one of the things that I've come to learn is that these things take time. Right. And that if you can come up with some type of light at the end of the tunnel, some type of plan, and just mm-hmm. know that it's going to be okay, that day by day you are changing, even if you can't feel or see the results, mm-hmm. that makes all the difference. But I didn't understand that. It okay. took me a long time to get to that place. Yeah. And so that brings me to my next question. So what kinds of things were you noticing changing as you were doing all of this healing? Well, for a long time, I didn't notice much. Uh, As I talked about, uh, over the first few months, I got sicker and sicker. Mm. And I was not in a very good place. And I was surprised at how long it took me to get out of that place. Okay. Even though I was radically changing my diet, I was doing all this work. My physical body wasn't really changing. What was changing was my mind and my approach and the way that I looked at the situation. And honestly, that made all the difference because I could continue forward knowing that things were getting better, even if I couldn't physically feel them Mm -hmm. or see them. Okay. And were healers also letting you know that there was a possible chance that you could get worse first? Uh, Yeah, of course. Of course, I'd heard about that. And so I, I understood it. It's just interesting because your emotions play so heavily into the psychology of your situation. Right. So it's really challenging when you feel terrible to put on a happy face. Right. And so that's kind of where the where the hard work begins. Okay. And you also resorted to seeing naturopaths. I did. Too. Yep, I okay. did. So I went in and I had a whole bunch of tests done. Um, it took about four months to figure out what was happening with me. Yeah. Um, and so there was the physical side, and I had met... Um, 
a group of naturopaths that was recommended to me by a friend, and I went in and saw them, and they gave me this giant list of things. There was actually finally a list. Mm -hmm. I was going into people, and they were giving me a list. And Mm -hmm. so there was some comfort in that. Uh, They were the first people to tell me that they didn't see cancer, but they saw a whole bunch of other things, and they let me know they were pretty concerned about my situation. And on one end, I felt better because the word cancer had that's huge. Been eliminated. <laughs> yeah. And on the other end, they were really concerned. And so the fear didn't go away. It just transitioned from one label to something else. Wow. To, into all the yes, all the things on the list. Yes. Which included what? Parasites? Yeah. So the main thing that I think is that the foundation was I have an autoimmune issue. And I've been suffering from that for 20 years. I believe that it was caused by a gut issue. Mm-hmm. So I had leaky gut. I had candida that led to food allergies. And over time, what happened is when your immune system is compromised, things just keep stacking up. Right. And you can imagine 20 years of stacking up. By the time I got into their office, I had systemic parasites, uh, two viruses. I had um, problems with my adrenal glands, kind of all the common things, my thyroid. Uh, All my organs of elimination were toxic because there was so much toxicity built up in my system. And so we just took the list and started at the top. Wow. And that's been the last two and a half years. But way better than cancer. Holy cow. Yes. <laughs> well, I hate to interrupt you again, but we're going to have to take another break. And remember, this is a live show. So if you're feeling stuck in your life and would like free coaching from Rory, then feel free to call one 298 kknw or 425-373-5527 after this quick break. On this weekly skinny, I would like to discuss poikiloderma. This is a common skin condition that causes the skin to become discolored and break down. The most acquired type is called poikiloderma of Savat, also known as sun aging. Poikiloderma will appear reddish brown, may include the appearance of broken blood vessels, and sometimes a slight roughness or bumpiness will be present as well. Poikiloderma of Savat will often appear symmetrical, occur on the sides of the cheeks and neck, and in the V of your chest formed by the sides of your neck and bottom of your breastbone. Although poikiloderma is not life-threatening, minor burning or itching can occur in these affected areas. Poikiloderma of Savat is said to be hereditary. It can often occur in the following adults, middle-aged, mostly women, especially those in menopause or those who have had their ovaries removed, fair-skinned, those who are exposed to a lot of sun or have been, and those who are sensitive to perfumes and chemicals. It can also be caused by or associated with other diseases like lupus, Lyme disease, and be due to medications like radiation therapy or steroidal use. Although poikiloderma is said to be incurable, you can indeed slow down the progression of it or improve it. A few easy and affordable ways are avoiding a lot of sun exposure, wearing SBF, and covering all those affected areas. Other treatments include laser therapies, microneedling, and also using a topical bioavailable vitamin A like that from Environ. Of course, none of these treatments get rid of it completely, but they do help by improving the texture and also reducing the redness and pigmentation. If you are noticing a constant redness on your neck, chin, and or chest, then it would be wise to see your doctor to rule out any underlying condition while diagnosing poikiloderma. If you are suffering from poikiloderma of Savat and would like to get on a regimen as well as a safe and effective treatment plan to help minimize your redness and pigment, then email me at sakura at sakuraskinandmind.com or call 206-730-7429. Want a more youthful figure no matter what age? Find answers at Madsen Medical Spa. Allow doctors Aaron and Paul to help you eliminate your frustration with weight management. Say no, no to yo-yo, diets, and exhausting exercise grinds. Madsen Medical Spa will do the heavy lifting for you and coach you all the way through to your ideal weight. We offer the latest and greatest in body sculpting and body contouring lasers and devices, high quality nutritional supplements and meal replacements, as well as mindful practices. We will treat the inside to treat the outside, and it's all personally tailored for you. Men and women, drop inches, not just pounds, and see a healthy, beautiful you. Consultations are free. Results are priceless. Log on to madsenmedspa.com. That's M-A-D-S-E-N medspa.com. Or call 425-656-8008. That's 425-656-8008. Get the shape you want this summer. Become a healthier, more beautiful you. Did you know that your skin is your body's first defense against disease and infection? BrioTech knows and has developed their topical skin spray to enhance your skin's natural healing responses and defenses. BrioTech is all about providing its customers products that help promote skin wellness. 
BrioTech Topical Skin Spray is a light misting spray, free of added fragrance, oil, alcohol, and parabens. All this protection without clogging your pores. It's a must addition to your all-around daily skincare regimen. Try BrioTech, a collection of sprayers from two ounces to eight ounces. With this bundle, you can have BrioTech Topical Skin Spray wherever life takes you. All natural and safe to use from head to toe. Irritations, redness, post-procedure sensitivities? Get BrioTech Topical Skin Spray today. Years in the making, doctor recommended, and available through Amazon. Learn more at BrioTechUSA.com. That's B-R-I-O-T-E-C-H-U-S-A.com. Support your skin at BrioTechUSA.com. Wondering what's on next on Alternative Talk 1150? Check out 1150KKNW.com. Welcome back to Love from the Hip. I'm spiritual hypnotherapist, master esthetician, and your host, Sakura Sutter. And feel free to email me at sakura at lovefromthehip.com with your comments, your criticisms, your questions, and well wishes. Let me know how I'm doing. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Rory Reich. He is a transformational coach and author of Transform Yourself Through Disease, Eight Steps to Reclaim Your Health and Your Life. And remember, if you're feeling stuck and would like some free coaching from Rory, then feel free to call 1-888-298-KKNW or 425-373-5527. So Rory, before the break, you were saying amazing news. You went into the naturopath, although they gave you a list of about 20 things, what wasn't on that list was cancer. Correct. So do you, is there a part of you, though, that thinks that on that journey and all that work that you did within the, what, two and a half Two and a half years, yeah. Two and a half years that you may have actually had cancer, but overcame it or transformed it into something less? Yeah, so I'll be honest, that was a thought in the back of my mind and a worry in the back of my mind up until probably just a few months ago. Even though the woman that I ended up working with, her name is Jackie Stratton, um, was the healer for my physical body. And she said the same thing. She detected that I didn't have cancer because it took me so long to feel better. Mm-hmm. It was a constant worry in the back of my mind and in my subconscious. But two things. One, I had to finally make a decision that I had to trust in this experience and trust in my team. And I had to let that go. And... Um, yeah, yeah, I think that so was it. So were you glad that you were diagnosed with cancer? I was, yes. Um, it's funny to hear that. Uh, but I honestly feel that these things happen to us for a reason. Mm-hmm. They're a wake-up call to help us look at our lives and to transform ourselves. And I was so checked out in every single area of my life. Mm-hmm. I, I needed this. There was a part of me that wanted this to happen. So that was the underlying thing that you found out that you were disconnected from everything that created all of that illness? Yes. You think? Okay. And so speaking of wake-up calls, you said you actually had three of them. I did. What were they? So I had a spiritual wake-up call, I had an emotional wake-up call, and I had a physical wake-up call. Uh, My emotional wake-up call was with my wife. There was a point when I think we both finally were able to pull our head up above the clouds and look at our situation and realize and see it for what it was. Mm. And this was just a moment of clarity where we had decided that we couldn't keep doing what we were doing. The second one was a spiritual wake-up call, which I talked about where I went to the sound bath. And I had this really transformative experience that, again, pulled my head out of the clouds. And I surveyed my life and said, what am I doing? How did I allow my spiritual life to get to this place? Um, and then the third one was walking into my doctor's office and getting the diagnosis. And all three of these happened at about three month period. So they were back to back. Wow. Yeah. Very fast. Yes. So I have to ask, so fast forward, what did you do with the news that you didn't have cancer, but you had all these other things? (laughs) Yeah. And so, like I said, it didn't change much. Mm -hmm. I mean, the fact that I didn't have cancer, of course, made me not worry about that thing. Um, the fact that the lady had wrote, that, that Jackie had written down this list made me feel a lot better. Like I looked at this list and even though it was overwhelming and scary mm-hmm. and I felt pretty terrible at the time, I had something to focus on. 
And so I had already formed this team. And so for the next two and a half years, I just stuck with my team. Okay. And every day I just moved forward. And I could see the light at the end of the tunnel, and that just kept me going. So where are you at now? Uh, with How do you feel? Uh, I feel great. Uh, I'm still not out of the woods yet. Like There's still things that I'm working on, and there will always be things that I'm working on. That's what I've realized. This process is a journey. Mm-hmm. It's not that you have a symptom and you go to the doctor and then it's taken care of and you go back to your regular life. These things happen so you will transform yourself right. and your entire life. Right. And that's one of the lessons I learned from a lot of these healers was is that they weren't healers before. Right. They had had a healing crisis. Mm-hmm. It like had, Eckhart Tolle. Yes. <laughs> and it had challenged them to change and grow and they had learned a ton and now they are helping others. Right. And I believe that's what this process is all about. Yeah, and you want to share that. You want to share that message that you've learned. I think it's everybody's responsibility who's going through this to share what they've learned for the betterment of humanity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the women you saw is an intuitive, correct? Yes. And she told you something during your healing that had perplexed you at the time. What was that? Well, she told me many perplexing things, but <laughs> I know that you're talking about the book. Uh, yeah, about probably... Two and a half years ago, when I first started seeing this woman, uh, she told me I was going to write a book. And at the time, I had so much going on that it was inconceivable for me to even think about taking on that challenge. And so I just kind of discounted it. Um, But over the years, I kept meeting more and more people that told me that I was going to write a book, Mm. that they saw me at book signings. And it started to become an actual reality in my mind. I started to think, wow, this this thing could happen. But at the time, I didn't know what the book was about. I was going to ask, did they tell you what you would be writing about? No, they did not. No, No. okay. And so I had no idea what the book would be even about. And then one day, probably about nine months ago, it just hit me. It was just this moment of clarity where I realized, oh my gosh, I've been taking incredibly detailed notes for the last two and a half years about everything I've learned about everything I had experienced. And I'm w- not a note taker. This was not normal. I don't know why I was doing it. I was yeah. just doing it. And I realized that was the book. Huh. And I took the notes out. They were electronic, and I pasted them all into a Word document. And within 15 minutes, I had a, the outline of my book. And that outline never changed. Wow. So who was the book intended for? Well, you know, at the time, I wasn't thinking so much about that. I was thinking, I have to do this. Yeah. There's some part of my soul that needs to write this book. But the book is for people, it's not just for people that are dealing with chronic illness. It's really, as you talked about before, it's about people that are stuck. Mm -hmm. I was stuck in every area of my life, my relationship, my work life, my spiritual life, my health. I'd gone through all of that and I'd come out the other side and I realized how many people in life are stuck. And when you're in it, and your emotions are taking over, it's so difficult to see how to get out of it. Mm -hmm. And so that's really what my focus is. The book is eight simple steps for anybody. It is focused on illness and chronic illness, but it's eight simple steps for anybody to utilize to try to get themselves through a period when they're stuck. And these are eight steps that you actually used. They are the eight steps that I used, yes. So let's go into those eight steps. Okay. (laughs) So can we start with number one? Yeah, so number one is healing is a journey. And we just talked about this. I think it's where you have to see this experience that you're going through for what it is, that it's an opportunity. And if you can embrace it, which I didn't do for a long time, I pushed it away. I pushed it down. But when I finally embraced it, it was an opportunity that allowed me to examine my entire life and to make radical changes. And I believe that's why we're doing this. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what was number two? Number two is about evaluating your life. And so, like I said, Uh, I believe that disease is just a symptom of some underlying issue. And we're not here to just knock it down and go back to our lives. It's really a wake-up call. You need to step back. You need to look at every single area of your life. You need to start asking yourself some hard questions. Mm -hmm. And so the second step is about doing that, evaluating your life, not just your physical symptoms. Right, and asking the question. Yes. Okay. And what is number three? Well, number three is decide to commit And really what that's about for me was about taking responsibility for why I was in the situation in the first place. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times we want to point the finger at another person or a job or a spouse or the medical community. But honestly, I 
was responsible for being in the situation that I was in. I oh, had, yeah, it's your body. Yes, I had made <laughs> all of the choices that led to that moment two and a half years ago. I had created that life. And so I think we need to take a step back and, to, and really see how much power and control that we have over our lives. And we have to take that responsibility. And then we have to commit to change mm. in every single way. Was that hard for you to wake up every morning and commit to healing? Um, you know, once I was able to turn that corner, no, mm-hmm. no, because I, I was motivated. Right. I had my motivation. I knew why I needed to change. I knew how to change. And that honestly, yeah. What was one of your motivations? Well, I have an eight-year-old daughter, so one of my motivations was being here for my daughter. Yeah. Uh, it was also about being an example for my daughter. And deep down, I knew that I had come to this planet for more than just being ill for half of my life. Mm -hmm. Like, this wasn't the end of my story. There was a purpose. This was just the beginning. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to have to interrupt again and go to another break. So, everyone, stick around for more Love from the Hip. Yes, I have it got now. Is your tween starting to experience a change in their skin? Want to get them on an easy at-home routine and have good skin hygiene? Allow Sakura Skin in Mind to help your tween out. This brief, deep cleansing and educational 35-minute facial is just enough to get your tween, ages 10 to 12 years old, started off in the right direction. Sakura Skin in Mind uses the latest in the clinical skincare industry to care for your tween the right way for just $65. Sakura Skin in Mind, treating skin out there with an of treatment and a pound of protection. Call 206-730-7429 or go to sakuraskinandmind.com. Post-traumatic stress syndrome affects people from all walks of life. Triggered by sexual assault, traffic, collisions, warfare, or other threats to life. PTSD is a killer. Every day, an average of 22 veterans commit suicide due in part to PTSD. Retired U.S. Colonel Debbie Simpson struggled with her own PTSD, following a military career specializing in critical care. Debbie turned to dancing as a way to heal unresolved grief, guilt, and shame caused by the losses of war. The benefits were so great that she founded the nonprofit Battlefield to Ballroom, a unique approach to assisting other brave warriors. Battlefield to Ballroom has partnered with famed dance company Arthur Murray International to help veterans in need. If you or someone you know can benefit, log on now to battlefieldtoballroom.org. That's battlefield, the number two, ballroom.org. Life is a dance, and you can give the gift of the first steps towards recovery. Donate at battlefieldtoballroom.org today. What's your story? Have you ever sat with that question and looked to your heart for the answer? It's time to explore the real you. Tune in Thursdays from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. for the brand new show, Story You, with Coach Debbie. Debbie and her guests have a mission to inspire and coach you to find your voice. If you need direction, Story You with Coach Debbie is for you. If you want to be an author, Story You with Coach Debbie is for you. Tune in Thursdays at 4 p.m. and be inspired. Did you know that your skin is your body's first defense against disease and infection? BrioTech knows and has developed their topical skin spray to enhance your skin's natural healing responses and defenses. BrioTech is all about providing its customers products that help promote skin wellness. BrioTech Topical Skin Spray is a light misting spray free of added fragrance, oil, alcohol, and parabens. All this protection without clogging your pores. It's a must addition to your all around daily skincare regimen. Try BrioTech, a collection of sprayers from two ounces to eight ounces. With this bundle, you can have BrioTech topical skin spray wherever life takes you. All natural and safe to use from head to toe. Irritations, redness, post-procedure sensitivities? Get BrioTech topical skin spray today. Years in the making, doctor recommended, and available through Amazon. Learn more at BrioTechUSA.com. That's B-R-I-O-T-E-C-H-U-S-A.com. Support your skin at BrioTechUSA.com. Get inspired every hour right here on Alternative Talk 1150. Welcome back to Love from the Hip. I'm spiritual hypnotherapist, master esthetician, and your host, Sakura Sutter. 
And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Facebook and subscribe to my YouTube channel and my podcast on Podcast One, Love from the Hip, and that's HYP. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Rory Reich. He is a transformational coach and author of Transform Yourself Through Disease, Eight Steps to Reclaim Your Health and Your Life. So before the break, Rory, you were going over your eight steps, and we're on number four. What's number four? Number four is take back control. And this is honestly one of the most important steps that I um, came up with and encountered. And the whole premise around this is about your thoughts and your emotions and your words create your reality. Mm -hmm. And this is that whole idea that what you think in terms of your outcome is what's going to happen. If you see yourself as being a sick person, if you see yourself as unable to get over this circumstance, then that's going to become your reality that you really have to change your mindset and your approach to your life if you want to be successful, regardless of your pursuit. Mm -hmm. Right. And you had witnessed that yourself when you were first diagnosed with cancer and you saw the symptoms just increase, right? It was. And that's really when I got into this, I was kind of at the bottom. Like I was so afraid. I was going through so much change. I was afraid about my divorce. I was afraid about money. I was afraid about my health. Mm -hmm. And I had come across um, some books that really changed my approach to this situation. And when I, after I read that that information, I just, I just saw life very differently. Mm -hmm. I realized that I had control over the way that I looked at this situation and that I could focus on the negative and I could focus on being scared or I could imagine an outcome that was positive and I could focus on that and take steps forward every day. Right. And I think that's why we're seeing such a big change in our medical industry right now and the healthcare industry is that people are taking back their control, their responsibility, their accountability for themselves and their healing, right? Yes. I I, I personally believe that you have to believe that you can be healed and be healthy for it to happen and that no one else can do that for you. Yeah, that's great. So what's the next step? Uh, Number five is choose where to begin. And so I think when we're in these situations where we feel stuck, where we feel lost, where we have chronic illness and we can't get answers. We want to know what the path forward looks like. Mm -hmm. We want to have all the answers, but that's not reality. It's not going to happen. And so what you need to do is just pick somewhere to start. It doesn't really matter where. You just need to pick something that feels right to you and go with that. And what I realized over time is that the universe and this process just unfolded naturally for me. Mm-hmm. But before I was so stuck on having trying to have every answer figured out, right. the whole plan from A to Z, but that's just not the way it works. And now in my life, I don't worry about having all the details. Mm-hmm. I just try to pick a place to start that feels good, and I go with that, and I watch everything magically unfold. You let it go, yes. and then you trust. I don't need to control the situation anymore. I know that the outcome will be positive. Yeah, that's great. So what's the next step, number six? Uh, number six is just take the next step. (laughs) (laughs) So funny enough, when you pick a place to start, you need to realize that after that, the next step will reveal itself. I look at it like breadcrumbs. You take an action and then you wait for the next thing to surface. And then you look at it and you decide if it feels right. And then you make a choice. Mm. And every day is just about that. Making choices. Our entire life is about making choices. And so you just have to look at what's in front of you and see how you feel about it and make a choice. And then another one will come and another one will come. But don't worry about 10 steps down the road. Right. It's a long ways away. Yeah. Let's just figure out step number one. And that was different than when you were first trying to find answers, right? You were diving deep into everything right away and yes. trying to, yeah. Yes. So you slowed it down. Yes. Okay. So what was number seven? What's number number seven, seven is be the new you. Um, And this is the idea that you have to decide at some point, like we talked about, about taking accountability. Mm -hmm. And then you have to decide that you are a healthy person. You have to leave that old person behind. You have to put a stake in the ground and say, from this day forward, every action I take, every thought that I have is this new version of myself. Mm -hmm. And you have to leave that old person behind. Right. Okay. And what's number eight? Number eight is practice patience. Um... And so obviously healing is a journey. These things take time. It, you didn't magically get into this one day. Whatever has been happening to you has been happening under the surface for a very long time. Mm. And so 
it's going to take a while for you to get out of this. Right. You right. just have to be patient. Okay. So can I ask you briefly, where do you hope to grow from here? Well, that's a great question. Um, you know, the last few years have definitely made a resurgence in my life. I have passions again. I'm excited about life again. And right now I'm just trying to explore life and define myself for this new chapter. And so every day I just wake up and I look for new information and I try new modalities and new healers. And I'm just really excited about life and looking at the magic again. Mm, that's wonderful. Can I ask you too, if for people that are skeptical and they're not spiritual, Yes. and having done all the healing that you have, what, what do you have to say to them? What's your message? Well, I think that there is no one solution for healing. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the thing is we look at we, and we try to label things and we try to label each other and label our problems, but it's really complicated. We live in a complicated world, more yeah. complicated than ever. And so I'd say that I believe it's a holistic approach. You should look at your, your physical body. You should look at your emotional life. You should look at your mind. And if you're so inclined, then you can look at the spiritual world as well. But I don't think you have to do all four of them. But mm -hmm. I think you should look at as many as you can. Don't just focus on your physical. Right. I think you're going to be limiting yourself and your options if you do. Well, and it's all connected. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> so how can my listeners learn more about you, your book, and contact you for coaching? Yeah, so the easiest way is just to go to my website, which is RoryReich.com, R-O-R-Y-R-E-I-C-H, or you can just email me directly at info at RoryReich.com, and my book's available at Amazon. And your book title again? Transform Yourself Through Disease. Awesome. Well, thanks again for being here today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you to Eric, my amazing producer. And thank you to the listener. And you can find me at lovefromthehip.com or sakuraskinandmind.com. You can also follow me on Instagram or on Facebook and subscribe to my YouTube channel as well as my podcast on Podcast One, Love From The Hip, and that's HYP. And if you really love the show and are interested in running an ad or your own business or have any questions or comments, feel free to email me at sakura at lovefromthehip.com. Stick around for the Get Hip segment and tune in next Wednesday at 2 p.m. for another Love from the Hip and make self-love contagious. Go ahead. I dare ya. On this Get Hip segment, I would like to discuss a recent hypnotherapy session I had with a young woman on the issue of feeling stuck. She was starting to not feel like every facet of her life was not going well at all. Her business seemed slow and her social life dull. She seemed to have lost her drive and enthusiasm for life. In the session, she discovered that she was trying to be something she wasn't. In being this person that wasn't her true self, she was unable to be successful in her business or enjoy her social life. She was constantly worried about what other people were thinking of her that she forgot to think about what she was thinking or feeling for herself for that matter. Once she let go of others' views and expectations of her, she not only felt lighter but also became more herself. As a result, she felt less stuck and more enthusiastic about her newfound life ahead of her. Sometimes we get so caught up in other people's expectations that we get so far from ourselves. And in doing so, we lose our way and ultimately feel stuck like we have hit a wall. We have to reconnect with ourselves and who we were meant to be in order to tear down the walls we build. Hypnotherapy is a great tool for self-discovery and for finding out why we have blocks and are feeling stuck. If you are interested in self-exploration and want to try hypnotherapy, then feel free to call 206-730-7429 or email me at sakura at sakuraskinandmind.com.